Seeker, written by Susanna Thompson, performed by Heather Firth. Chapter 15. I get called down to the counselor's office right before lunch the next day. Silas is sitting in one of the chairs facing her desk, and he turns to look at me when she greets me as I hesitate in her doorway. She talks in a cheery tone of voice about how I can show Silas where the cafeteria is and have lunch with him. Okay, I agree as I evaluate his somber expression. He's silent as we walk out of her office and down the empty hallway. What's wrong? I ask him. I failed my tests, he replies dejectedly. You can't fail them, I explain. They're placement tests. They just help them figure out which classes to put you in. I'm not in the grade you told me I would be in, he says. I have to take remedial math. Really? I question in surprise. What grade are you in? He pulls a sheet of paper out of the folder I gave him yesterday and hands it to me. I scan his class schedule before my eyes go back to the top of the page and see that he's a sophomore. Looking back down his class list, I note the remedial math class. But I also notice that he's in advanced English. After saying that he's been placed in some random filler elective class, I turn back toward the counselor's office. Did you tell her that you know languages? I inquire as he follows me. She didn't ask, he replies. A language will look better on your college application. I tell him, which one do you want to take? I already know them all, he reminds me. I need to study what I don't know. Trust me on this, I urge him. It'll help your grades. I barge back into the counselor's office. He wants to take Spanish. She looks uncertain about this request. Maybe next year. We don't want to overload his schedule this year. He already knows some Spanish, I tell her. He picked it up on the street. She appears to be very uncomfortable with me mentioning his personal situation, and she directs her question to Silas. Are you sure you want to take Spanish? It will mean extra homework, and you already have some challenging classes. I want to take Spanish, he confirms. Okay. She allows. I'll sign you up for it, but you can drop it if it's too much for you. He'll be their best student, I assure her. They'll probably want to put him in the advanced class. She smiles at me now, apparently pleased by my faith in him. I'm sure that he'll do fine. I will study in advance to the correct grade, Silas declares. It worked out, I tell him. You're in the same grade as me. I am behind the other students, he says in displeasure. You've done exceedingly well under the circumstances, the counselor says. You said you wanted to go to school with me, I remind him. We wouldn't have any classes together if we weren't in the same grade. In which classes will we be together, he inquires. Since he mostly has basic classes and I'm not in advanced English, we actually have no classes together. Uh, well, we have lunch, and you would normally be in senior lunch. You'll make new friends here too, the counselor assures him. Not anyone like Mila, Silas remarks. They will never know me like she does. That's true. The counselor agrees carefully. But you can make a new start here and meet people with different perspectives than your old friends. Look at it as an opportunity to expand your horizons. She has no idea how vast his horizons used to be, I think. He was death for thousands of years, and now he's stuck in high school. The bell rings, and the hallway is filled with students when we begin to walk toward the cafeteria again. Hey, a pretty brunette calls out as she falls into step with Silas. 
I didn't know you went to school here. I do now, Silas informs her. So, yeah, I'm Rachel. Remember? We met at Walmart Saturday night. Yes, he says. You gave me your phone number. So, uh... She glances at me, but continues her conversation with him. Did you lose it? You never called. I didn't lose it, but I don't wish to date you, he tells her. Her expression changes from pleasant to angry. You could have just told me you have a girlfriend. She snaps and hurries away in a huff. That was smooth, I remark wryly. You could have been a little nicer about it. I did something wrong, he questions. I used the correct terminology for this era. Yeah, but there's more to it than using the right words, I explain. You have to use them in the right way so that you don't hurt people's feelings. How did I hurt her feelings? He asks in bewilderment. You told her that you don't want to date her, I reply. I don't he declares. Was I supposed to lie? No, I say in frustration. But you shouldn't have said it like that. You needed to give her an excuse for why you couldn't go out with her, like you have a girlfriend or something. A lie, he states. Well, yeah, I admit, but it's nicer than the truth. He ponders that in puzzlement as I guide him into the cafeteria, my eyes stray to the table where I always sat with my friends, and a lump forms in my throat. I blink away sudden tears as I hurry toward the lunch line. Hey, Silas. I was just thinking about you, and here you are. How amazing is that? I turn to see Madison Cleary smiling at him. It's somewhat amazing, he agrees uncertainly. Have you been thinking about me? She asks him flirtatiously. I thought about calling you, he replies in a straightforward manner. Then why didn't you? She inquires in the same flirty tone. You're not shy, are you? He opens his mouth to answer, but pauses to glance at me. I can't go out with you. I have a girlfriend. Madison's eyes narrow at me before she opens them wide in fake surprise. So soon, Mila? It's only been a week since your boyfriend died. I believe it was two weeks ago, Silas says. That makes it better, Madison remarks. I'm not his girlfriend, I tell her. Then who is? She questions. Silas is no help, because he looks to be at a loss as to how to answer her. She's, um, I begin, but Madison cuts me off. I'm not judging you, she declares falsely. I've heard that people deal with grief in all kinds of ways. Comfort, sex, and all that. She's succeeded in her mission to make me look as bad as possible, and I flush in embarrassment as I notice people watching us. Escaping their stares, I rush from the cafeteria into the now empty hallway. I'm not even aware of Silas until he enters the restroom after me. You can't be in here, I tell him. Do you have to go to the bathroom? He asks. Everybody thinks we're... I'm unable to speak aloud the rumor that is surely spreading about us. Dating, Silas supplies. That's the nice version of what they think. You have to get out of here. If anyone sees you in here with me, it'll be even worse. Worse than what? He inquires. You'll get in trouble if they catch you in here. I say in desperation. Boys are not allowed in the girls' bathroom. That finally gets him to leave. I slump against the wall, feeling completely demoralized.